Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? God is a good God, and yes he is. I said, God is a good God, yes he is. I said, God is a good God, yes he is. I said, God is a good God, yes he is. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God that he has woken us up this wonderful, amazing, beautiful, awesome, spectacular, glorious, magnanimous day today. Thank be to God that he has given us a breath of life, that he has given us a sound mind and a sound body with a heart that's beating. Ah, to God be the glory that he has given us warm blood running through our veins. I said to God be the glory mm, that he has given us a bed to sleep in at night time. I thank be to God mm, that he has given us clothes on our back. I, I thank be to God because he has given us abilities. He has uh, given us abilities to use our talents in order to provide for our houses. I, I thank be to God that he has given us voices uh, that we are able to speak. I thank be to God that he has given us the ability to use our hands to do good with. I, I thank be to God that he has given us eyes to see and a heart to and a heart to understand. Ooh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory that he has given us grace, that he has given us understanding, that he has given us mercy, that he has given us forgiveness, that he is the enduring merciful one. I to God be the glory for his word is true for his word is live his word is living his word is here right now to God be the glory that he has given us the way that he is the way I thank be to God because he give us the urge to desire the milk and honey the and, and, and for some even the meat of his word I thank be to God, I thank be to God that he has not given up on us. I thank be to God, I said I thank be to God that he has not given up on us. You hear me? I said I thank be to God that he has not given up on us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I love it. Ooh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay, today I wanted to go a little deep, and we're going to go so deep that we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, let me turn on the flashlight, maybe it'll help, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, for us touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the frowardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that a chair was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in his, this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Me Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared. We, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this confidence boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you, and make up before, and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, 
that the same mighty be the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. Now we understand what covetousness is, right? And covetousness is something that we want that doesn't belong to us. Okay? Something that we want that we don't have yet. Something that we uh, want so bad that we forget to love one another. In order to get it. We would kill each other. We would steal each other's lives. We would destroy each other. To get it rather than to love one another. But this I say. He which is soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which is soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now to sow, it is like to uh, put plant a seed within a ground. And it may grow. And as we reap it, <clears throat> we reap the harvest of it. Uh, we, we sow a seed within the ground and a tree is formed from it. And then there's fruit that come from that tree, many seeds maybe. And as that fruit comes from the tree, we reap the harvest of the fruit. Lest it does not become fruitful and it's bare. Then we reap the tree itself and hone it down to plant another. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. So we should not give with, with, with the wantonness of desire of having something back, but just from our heart that we have to give. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have insufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So that's where it comes where we, we, we shouldn't have we should not be desirous of wanting anything. No, I mean literally nothing that we don't already have. But we should be praising God and thanking God for the things that we already do have. You know, every moment is a moment. That he has given us. It's a brand new life. You see, I, I may not see the next moment. I may choke on my tongue this moment right now. And I don't see the next moment. But why have I planned for that next moment to be here? Because I have hope within my heart, maybe. And I know the promise of God. But all the less, all the most... We should say, if Lord will, we will do this or do that the next moment. But we should not be so covetousness, covetous and wanting and desiring something so much as if we will see the next moment. So much so that we forget to love one another and be a cheerful giver at the same time. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. What is grace? Nobody understands grace sometimes. Grace is that a child, when he enters into a womb, knows nothing. How can you beat on that child before he even enters into the womb? How can you beat on a child that has just barely exited the womb? And has gained life. Without any understanding. You see we have a rod and a staff. The rod is used to correct and direct. How do we correct one another? Well first and foremost we must be corrected. And live in a corrected way. 
or else the child can't understand what you got to say. Second of all, we must be able to not be abusive within our language. But give them that which is right to do. Let them know the right thing to do as we are doing the right thing. You don't tell them, oh, you're doing this wrong, doing that wrong. No, why would you do that? That's what the Ten Commandments are for. They're already there. You know the Ten Commandments. We teach them the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is to abound within our, our minds and in our hearts to understand what is right from wrong already. So as they grow up, we, we, we do teach them the Ten Commandments and tell them, okay, this is right and this is wrong. And as they do something wrong, we don't continue to correct them and tell them they are wrong, but we correct them and give them what is right to do. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always have insufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now many of us don't understand. Okay, as we do good toward one another, as you give to the receiver and you have worked already to gain the supply that you are given to the receiver, should you have to work even harder to go and give it to the receiver? Or should the receiver work a little bit to come and gain the gift that you have worked so hard to supply. And then there are many of us that we get paid for our work. Yes, we get paid for our work that we may go out to the receiver that they may gain the gift. A lot of people don't understand tithes, mint, and all that. Lord willing, if God allows a minister to go out and reach out unto others and supply for the widows and supply for those that are without, then yes, they may be able to receive an earning in order to do that which is right with that earnings. But if they're not doing that, then they're good for nothing, right? That's what the word says. He said, if you have not charity, then you could do all this stuff and have not charity. That is the gift of giving within your heart without receiving first and foremost. So can we be givers without gaining an increment within this world? Without gaining a, 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 a salary before God has blessed us with a salary? Be enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causeth through us, thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberty 
liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gifts. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Father God. <laughs> yeah, I know I don't have much to sing, but I praise God that he has given me the ability to just, you know, reach out to him one way or another. You know, with praises, with prayer, with the urgency to read. Yes, I have urgency to read. You know why? Because before the word of God chose me, before our Father God chose me, I was not all the way here. I was considered schizophrenic. I heard many voices. I saw many things. I was in hell on earth. If you may call it perdition, you shall. But I was in hell on earth. I had no ability to react or respond nor retain what was going on. But as the word of God chose me, I started and I had this, this great urge, urgency within my heart to read. Not even knowing what I was reading. Not retaining what I was reading. Not understanding what I was reading. But this urgency got more urgent within me. More and more and more as if I was fighting for life. And I was. So I started reading. I, I kept a Bible, Bible on my left hand. And I kept a Bible on my right hand as I was laying in bed. I kept a Bible on my foot. Why? Be, be, in every room I had a Bible. Why? Because something within me, this urgency said, you have to have a Bible everywhere. You have to have a Bible and you must read continuously and praise or else you'll never see the light and so I did I read I read I read I read I read I read I ain't I didn't retain it because I, I, I'm considered retarded within this uh, USA they said I was retarded, that I could not retain what I read long enough to understand it. So I was considered illiterate, retarded. But I still read. Not retaining a word I was reading, but I still read. And I had the urgency to read more. The urgency to read more. The urgency to get down and pray to God and say, God, please bless me to understand this word. Please bless me to retain this word. Please bless me, Father God, that I may be able to get back my life. I'd go out every night and I'd walk this middle of the street and I'd praise God to the top of my lungs as a crazy man. <laughs> my pastor told me, he says, stay in the middle of the road. <laughs> Don't tell a crazy man to stay in the middle of the road. He'll take it literal. As I did. I go in the middle of the road. I start praising God walking down the street. I even got videos of the, the police pulling me over and telling me I'm foolish for doing it. <laughs> to God be the glory. But at nighttime, I also went out and I ministered to people. Anybody that would hear the word, I'd talk to them about God. Anybody that wouldn't hear the word, I'd praise God in front of them. <laughs> A little provoking, but I didn't know no better then, you know. And, and so God had this urgency on my heart. I would go get food from the uh, food donation place and I'd spread it out to the people that didn't have the ability to go get food. You know, I, I'd go to the food place and I'd, I'd donate my time just because I felt like I didn't want to, I didn't want to just like take from them and give to others. I wanted to work for it to give to others. 
And uh, he, he, he blessed me so much with the abundance of everything that I needed that I was getting so much and I didn't have enough time or en uh, uh, enough strength to spread it out quick enough. Give it out enough. You know, as I was getting, he was putting in my cupboards and my refrigerator twice as much as I was going out and giving. And I wasn't trying to get it like that. It just happened. And God bless me. Um, that was a time whenever I, uh, I was about to become homeless, even during this, during this time. And, um, I was afraid, sort of, not really, but I was. I went out and I reached out to a friend and I'm like, man, what am I going to do, this and that? So she had a car and she took me uh, to put all my money on a card because I had all cash on me. And where I was living in, in Birmingham, Alabama, I thought maybe I'd get robbed or something, you know. And so I wanted to put cash on the card. And as I was putting cash on the card, we rolled by this place, uh, an apartment for rent. And all of a sudden, she's like, why don't you just call him? I only had like $400, $500 on me, not near enough to rent it. I'm like, okay, well, sure, why not? I call him up, and there's this lady that answers. She so, has such a beautiful heart. Um, I talked to her, and I told her what the situation was and how much money I had. And that I literally just received a job because God blessed me with one. Somehow or another, I walk into a store and they tell me, and they asked me, they said, do you have a job? Uh, I told them, I said, yeah, because I was a, you know, entrepreneur in my jobs, just doing all sorts of jobs. And he's like, would you like a job? I'm like, okay, sure. So he's like, okay, you start tonight. And I started uh, making $100 cash per week. And as I was making $100 cash per week, um, now, I mean, that was the beginning. And this lady, I told her, I was like, yeah, I'm sure that I, I've already worked a week. I, I can give you another $100 the next day, da, da, da. And, she, and I had to get my lights turned on. I had to get my gas turned on. I had to get everything turned on. I did not have a clue how I was going to be able to do none of it. I just took the faith walk you know and it worked out the lady calls me back about five minutes later she's like i talked to the uh, landlord and he said he'll work with you don't you know come by and uh we'll get you the key have you sign the lease but you don't get the key until after you pay the extra hundred and you have so long until you pay so much I'm like, okay, cool. And at the moment, I didn't even know that I was going to have to pay a deposit on in order to get the electric, gas, and water turned on. And so I just jumped to it. And I gave them the money. The next day, I gave them that. And they, they gave me the key. I had nothing in my house. No, 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 no furniture, no bed, no nothing. And this was during the, the, the blessings, you know. And as this happened, God... Put it on my heart, and I was just in the middle room, <laughs> and all I had was the Bible and this, and I praise God, and y'all were there, y'all, y'all, y'all were there, y'all just didn't know what was happening because I didn't make it a, a an any announcements, you know. But I was still doing this right here as I'm doing right now. Y'all were there, <laughs> and uh, so later. I ended up, uh, next day I talked to the landlady and her husband blessed me with a second job. And this guy, I didn't even know how to do the things this guy was doing. And this guy told me he would teach me and pay me to teach me and also pay me to help him. And this was uh, working on uh, compressed guns and not, uh, you know, the the, zzz, the 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 drill guns and stuff like that, and the power guns and the uh, uh, jacks, you know, anything with compression and stuff like that in it. And he taught me a lot of stuff. Well, I'm blessed to have known. And, but at the same time, because of this, I had a. I had called and I found out I had a $300 deposit for my electric. 
I had a 200 deposit. No, it was 150 deposit for my water and a $200 deposit for my gas or one or the other, you know, something like that. But either way it goes, I had not enough for that plus my deposit for my rent at the same time. And I still didn't really have much of fear. And I went without gas for probably at least three weeks. I went without lights for about a week and a half. And I went without water itself for probably at least two weeks. I was actually getting buckets of water and bringing it home and going into the uh, bathroom and literally washing myself with it. And I was still praising God. And I even had my neighbors, they tell me as I come out, they're like, man, I just don't understand. How can you be so happy? How can you be so uh, thankful and everything? He said, I'd want to, I, 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 I wouldn't, you know, he was saying bad words to me. And I don't want to really repeat it because it wasn't that good. But it didn't get me down or out or anything because I just knew God has me. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I was able to come up with the deposit. And this is all me working. This is me working. This wasn't me going out and getting a handout or nothing, you know? I, I didn't go out and get a handout and ask somebody to pay my rent or pay my utilities or anything. This was me working. God blessing me with the work, the abilities, and the talents. And, and, and then he's blessing me with people that's teaching me their talents, you know, come on. God is good. He is wonderful. He is amazing. He is ma magnanimous. I'm telling you, God is a, a, he's a miracle worker. And so while this was happening, <laughs> I was still going back and forth to church. And not too many people knew my, my situation. But I was, I had faith. And there was one other man that knew my situation. He wanted to help me out. But I wouldn't let him. Because I told him that God put it on my heart that he would provide everything, right? You know, through my abilities, through my talents, and he, he would provide everything. And slowly but surely, people started showing up. And I, I got a blow-up mattress for my room, you know. I got, uh, I ended up with two beds in my room in the end. I ended up, and I had a three-bedroom apartment at that <laughs> with one little guy in there, me. <laughs> and I was able to cover all my bills. I was, um, I never did get any furniture for the front room. So it was, uh, I ended up, I ended up in a different apartment God blessed me with later on. And it was furnished. Go figure. <laughs> Everything had it in it. But, you know. God is good. This is how miraculous God is. And during this situation, God started teaching me and giving me understanding of his word slowly. Because every single day I'd read, I'd read, I'd read. And like I said, I felt like I was being tortured for a while. I felt like demons were doing some things to me. You know, I, I know it sounds nuts. It's okay. I understand. You know. <laughs> But I, I really felt like all this stuff was really happening. And I'd wake up, I'd read. And this was in my newest apartment. And uh, that was when I started doing all that other stuff. And I'd go out and i help people and everything like that. And uh, But this is the ministry that God has blessed me with. Y'all don't know my to total full testimony. Because I wasn't trying to give it to y'all just right then and there but the simple fact of it is, is I wanted y'all to see how God, good God is and how much he will bring you through because he tells me that the tester must be dead first and I believe I had enough faith that the tester had to die before I tell you my whole true testimony God is good. He will bring you through so many things. He brought me through schizophrenia. I don't take no more medicines. I haven't taken medicines in years. 
He brought me through bipolar, which is a, a, a something that causes you to have a whole crap ton of emotions within one second. And it, it, you're, you're so mixed up, you don't know how you feel, really. You know? He put love in my heart and switched it out and said, hey, you just feel love. That's it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I used to be a gangbanger. I used to run with, a, you know, a gang. And I'm not really going to name the gang just because I don't want to give it any praise. Uh, I used to rob still. I rob, I stole cars and rob houses, I rob people. I used to do drugs. I sold drugs before I did drugs. I, 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 I did a, just about every drug there was. I did methamphetamines, crack, cocaine. I did uh, uh, that spice that they had running around is K2 or something like that. It's kind of like incense stuff. Um, I was smoking cigarettes for many years, many, many years. Uh, they said that I had hepatitis C. It came in contact with my blood, and all of a sudden, the they called me back and told me, hey, I don't know how, but somehow or another, your body fought it all naturally. To God be the glory. That's all that is, to God be the glory. And so why am I so committed to God? Because he cared enough for me to give me life, give me understanding. All these things that I praise him for and I say glory be to God for mercy, understanding, for 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 a roof over my head. All these things that I praise him for it is because I am actually actually thankful. I'm appreciative. I am so appreciative. Because he blesses me with he didn't only he didn't only allow me to and go through a trial and tribulation in order to be blessed with it. But I went. I have experiences of hardships to get it. And the hardships to get it gave me the ability to appreciate it. The hardships to have lost so much in life. Thinking that I had so much without God gave me the ability to appreciate it. You know how many times I should have ended up in prison? I should I should have died. I got hit by cars. I got hit by a diesel. Uh, you know, there, there's so many occasions that I was not thankful. I did not see God in those moments because I was unappreciative. Of this life. But I thank God. And I hope to God. We all thank God. And become appreciative. To everything that is given to us. Seen or unseen. But let us recognize who God is. Let us recognize what a blessing is. Let us recognize what life is. Enough to keep on rushing back to him even when we fall. Oh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It happens to us all. But there is a prodigal son for a reason. To teach you and train you. To learn how to repent. To turn from our wicked ways. Our wicked doings. Our wicked thoughts. Our wicked actions. And to reach back unto our Father God and say, Father God... I'm sorry. And mean it. Mean it so much so that we don't want to be that ugly child no more. 
the hateful child, the one that 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 that, that mistreats and misuses and abuses our Father God and all the blessings that He has given us. Let's say, Father God, help me. Help me to be this good and faithful child. I know you made me a certain way, but Father God, destroy that mu that demon in me. In Jesus' name. So now we're going to go into Galatians chapter 5. He says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. That means if you are clean on the inside and the outside, so much because you're in control or you and, and you go by certain rules and certain traditions then Christ profits nothing within you Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever you are justified by the law now what is the law it's it's kind of sort of like principalities within this world you see Christ put all principalities to shame. And principalities was, hey, you got to clean those cups. You got to clean those uh, bracing things before you clean the inner man. Hey, you got to follow all these rules by a man that doesn't follow them at all. He said, reach unto me. I am the only one that is meek and lowly at heart. I am the only one that had followed all. And I'm going to give you something better. I'm not going to tell you to live by this. But I'm going to give you my love and my life that you may live by it. Because I already came all that. He put principalities to shame. We're saying, oh, Jesus if you are who you say you are, take yourself down from the cross. <laughs> Tell our Father God to put you down and not suffer all this. <laughs> right? That's the principalities. Oh, we want to see this miracle with our eyes right now. <laughs> We don't believe you unless we see a physical form right here, right now, of you doing this miracle right here, right now. Man, that's the principle. Principalities. The wrong understandings. As we're mistreating them, crucifying them, spitting on them. These are the people, these are, are those that we would consider our enemies spitting on us, mistreating us as we're hanging and bleeding on a cross, suffering, going through our trials and tribulations. And they're like, ha, 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 let me see God perform a miracle in your life right now. Ha, 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 ha. Christ Jesus said, I already overcame all that all them principalities just believe in me have faith in me put my love in you love your enemy love the one that's hating you don't have no don't have no uh, bitterness within your heart love the one that misuses you don't have no bitterness within your mind just love them with a joyful heart without contention without hatred Without vengeance, is love. The way I did you, as I hung and bled on the cross and you did the same thing to me. 
Oh, yeah. Just remember, as we were children and we were unbelieving, there was many times that we probably did the same thing to another person that believed. I'm sure of it, somehow or some way. And he said... For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Now, what is love? Love is uh, where you can love your enemies. Love is where you can love your friends and family, even when they misuse you and mistreat you. Love is having grace and understanding that if they don't have the love of God in them, how are they going to love you? And if they don't have the love of God within them and you don't love them the way Christ has loved you, how are they going to come to know the love of God? If you speak and walk and talk and say you know Christ and you are the son of God or daughter of God and you are joint heirs of Christ, and you can't love them the way Christ has. How are they ever going to know? How are they ever going to learn? Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. See, if we allow a little bit of hatred or anger within our hearts, it can cause us to boast the devil out of our mouth. And it will turn our entire body around as if, guess what? As if we were never the children of God and we become forgetful hearers and not doers of his word. One wrong move. If Jesus Christ would have spoken one angry word, the scribes and the Pharisees had something to accuse him of. Why was he silent the whole time? Because he already knew their heart. They already had within their heart to, 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 to crucify him. So even if he did try most that he might have done was spoke something wrong in order for them to accuse him even the more so he was silent he was quiet he let them do what they they set out to do within their hearts and he said hey if if you have coveted within your heart you have already done it. So you know, once they did it within their hearts, once they have made that decision within their hearts, he knew there was no turning back. There was no change in it. And God said he knows every man's heart before we come into Christ. He said they do err within their heart. They have not known my ways. They do not know my love. So if Christ Jesus was the only one with that love, then how, how would he expect for them to have mercy on him? So instead, he put their principalities to shame and had mercy on them. Hmm. Wow, what a, what a merciful God there. He said, a little leaven leaveneth a whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. So he said, don't allow bitterness, hate, wrath, anger, or anything to come into your heart to cause your mind to be forgetful within his word. That we may be doers of it, of his love. But he that trouble you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be, he tells that, them, <coughs> that they will be their own judge. Their hatred, their anger, their bountifulness within this world will be their own judge. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? 
and then to offense of the cross cease. I would they were even cut off with trouble you. And so we understand that and there are some that, that are engrafted into the tree of righteousness. There are some that are cut off as branches. But understand, just because they are cut off and we are engrafted in, don't boast against them. Understanding that they can also be engrafted in as we, by, by wild, were engrafted in to that which is unnatural, but now is natural to us. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. He said, beware, if your heart condemns you, remember that God is greater than your heart. Be meek, slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to hear. Cut it off with you before it continues. If you have nothing but hatred and anger and wrath within your heart, it's best not to speak at all. Cut yourself off. This I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So now we got to remember the spirit, remember the word of God, that we may allow this, we, we may give our flesh, our, our mindset, our heart unto God, the spirit, that he may react for us. But if we react quickly, guess what? We're going to react upon the natural beastly man, right? And what is the natural beastly man? He says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so we understand that this isn't from her, it isn't coming from God. It's not. So what what should we do? Give them grace? Love our enemies, bless them which curse us, do good unto those which uh, uh, despite, despitefully use us and mistreat us, pray for them, right? Now he says, now these are the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now remember that Christ Jesus overcame all principality in this world. And as us knowing that he overcame all principality in this world, we have to understand his love, not no other love but his love. Before we take this into heart, understand his love. He says, now that, now that you are saved, now that you believe, now learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. My love has no ill towards this neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Your neighbor is your friend. Your neighbor is your father, mother. Your neighbor is someone you don't know, a stranger. Your neighbor is someone you may know that hates you. Peace. Long-suffering. That's to have hope even during a trial and tribulation. To, to, to be able to be thankful and grateful and knowing that, hey... The devil don't last long in any occasion because the devil's defeated. And gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meekness, slow to speak, slow to anger, but quick to hear, temperance, and that is to give all God control. Against such there is no law, and they that our Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So we don't react upon our affections or lust. If we live in the spirit, 
And let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. That's to be seen, to be known, to be like the scribes and the Pharisees walking in long robes and, 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 and to be praised, provoking one another, envying one another. And that's be, to envy another is to be covetous, to, to want something that don't belong to you. Now we're going to go into uh, the First Timothy chapter six, First uh, Timothy three. This is a true saying: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one rule, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of his the church of God. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. A good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faith, and all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us the ability to walk within your life. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us the life of Christ within us, Father God, the life of Christ within your word, the life of Christ within your understanding. Father God, we ask that you give us the heart that is charitable to walk even as you are and be even as perfect as you are within and on the out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. Praise Jesus. Amen.